lifting to improve flexibility. I thought it was the other way around. You have to stretch to improve your lifting. In this video, I'm going to explain the latest research about mobility. More specifically, how strength training compares to regular stretching for improving joint range of motion or basically flexibility. I will give you two strategies that you could use to improve mobility without compromising your overall strength or giving up on explosive movements like sprinting and jumping. At the end, I will reveal how you can use this knowledge to efficiently warm up for strength or endurance sessions. All right, before we're all gonna skip the warm up, let's dive into the science. Hi everyone, welcome back to another What Science video. I'm Gomar, I'm a senior scientist doing experimental work at ETH Zurich in Switzerland. I have spent the last decade studying muscle biology and its relation to health and fitness. I have published dozens of peer-reviewed articles and now I want to explain some of that science back to you guys. First of all, let's get into this video. Uh, what exactly is range of motion? Range of motion refers to the full movement potential of a joint. Usually it's range of flexion and extension. Full range of motion is important in many sports to optimize performance. Think about Tiger Woods driving the golf ball over 300 yards. He needs full range of motion in his hips and shoulders to generate the most amount of power. Same holds true for a weightlifter, a ski jumper, a gymnast and so on. The question now is, how do you improve range of motion? Basic stretching has been a component in the warm-up for many sports for many years. It was just something that the coach would always do, right? Um, but recently, the use of static stretching before powerful movements such as basic lifting or weightlifting has gotten some critique. Take, for instance, this study. That found that stretching four times 30 seconds before maximal leg extension would decrease peak force production from, for example, the quadriceps. Depending on the speed of contractions, these differences were substantial, up to 7%. How disappointed must it be that uh, you're not able to reach your one rep max just because you have been stretching too much on beforehand? Other studies have found similar results across all kinds of sports and movement patterns. For an overview, for example, check the study uh, links in the description of this video. So how do you then get better mobility? One option would be to do your mobility exercises separate from high velocity, high power exercises. Stretching in the evening in front of the TV while lifting throughout the day. A good option for some, but I rather like to combine the two to save time and to be honest, who likes to stretch in front of their favorite Netflix series anyways. Another option is not to do stretching at all before your lifting session. What? Skip the warm-up, you say? That, that cannot be healthy. No, seriously, just start lifting, but build up gradually with low weights and relatively high reps. Increases in range of motion will follow. You don't believe me? Take a look at this overview study. After screening and checking the eligibility uh, criteria, 55 studies were included that looked at the effect of strength exercises on joint range of motion. What you see here is so-called a forest plot, which ranks all the studies based on their effect sizes. The studies in this graph compared, to, compared doing resistance training with doing nothing at all, a control. You can clearly see that although there is some variance between the studies, the overall effect of strength training on range, on range of motion is positive and hence greater than doing nothing at all. I hear you thinking, yeah man, I mean, that's logical. It is always like that. Doing something is always better than, than doing nothing at all, like a control group. Fair point. It maybe is better to compare strength training exercises with, with stretching and then compare which one has the largest uh, effect on range of motion or effect size. This is what this graph uh, depicts. Bottom line, no advantage for either method. Both regular stretching and strength exercise improved range of motion equally well. This is quite interesting, right? Let's break it down, let's say a little bit more. 
The authors also made the effort to look at this data, let's say, in more in detail. For instance, in this table, you see that sex, status of training or type of contraction all did not matter when it comes to strength exercises improving range of motion. Whether you are a man or a woman or whether you are doing, let's say, concentric exercises or eccentric exercises, strength exercises will improve the range of motion according to this data of 55 studies pooled. What is more interesting is which type of exercise actually influences. Here you can see an overview of different type of exercise that are applied as strength exercises. Only body weight exercises seem not to improve range of motion, while free weights, machines, mixed modalities absolutely do so. So how can we apply this to our own training routine? Pretty simple. Your time in the gym is super valuable. You need to use it efficiently. Obviously, do a warm-up. Which one and how you structure this warm-up depends on the type of activity you will do. I will give two examples. First, functional fitness slash weightlifting. And second, some kind of team sports like football, basketball, handball, and so on. Let's start with functional fitness. Spend five to 10 minutes warming up your aerobic and anaerobic energy systems. For more info on this, uh, check out our previous video on the basics, for example, of interval training. Best is to do this on a bike or some, some sort of erg where the intensity is ramped up throughout those 10 minutes. Why should you do this? Because aerobic energy systems need 10 to 20 minutes to fully warm up. Enzymes that enable efficient energy production, especially those of the Krebs cycle and the electron transport chain in the mitochondria, work better at higher muscle temperatures. It takes some time before metabolism is fully ramped up. Let's say after this general warm-up, do movement-specific exercises with light weights, for instance with a PVC pipe or an empty bar. Here is, for example, a good warm-up drill that I always use uh, for squats. 10 Kang squats, which is a good morning into a squat. Straight into 5 pulsed squats. Straight into knee taps each side, let's say, 5 times. After that, I do my normal back squats first at very light weights to then use my working sets at heavier weights. Instead of wasting time stretching for 10 minutes, that could potentially hamper your performance, you can also opt for, for example, foam rolling. Foam rolling has been shown to improve range of motion without losing this uh, strength or explosiveness later uh, during your heavy lifts. All in all, I would spend not more than 15 minutes warming up for, your, for any type of session, being functional fitness or weightlifting. Maybe a little bit more for functional fitness, but certainly not for lifting simply because you can use the initial sets to enhance your range of motion using lighter weights and most importantly you will be more efficient in the gym which is super important in my opinion a coach once told me best way to improve your squat mobility is to squat the data here shows he's right now let's look at team sports for instance football same goes here General cardiovascular warm-up involving running at higher and higher intensities. Avoid excessive stretching and replace this with movement-specific exercises, like kicking the ball first at very low intensity and, uh, for example, to minimize the stress on the joints, to then ramp it up uh, later in the warm-up. Include foam rolling, I think it's a good idea, certainly in players who naturally have low mobility and need the extra work. So wait, you are saying I should never stretch? No, if you need the range of motion, like me, for example, um, to, to be able to do specific movements or to get better at them, I'm thinking about overhead squats or snatches, try to separate your mobility sessions from your main strength session. As I said, stretch in the evening, lift throughout the day. But for most people and for most exercises, excessive stretching is simply eating away quality time of your session. That time could be better used to scroll down YouTube, subscribe to the World Science channel, and like this video. Obviously, I'm joking, you get the point. All right, that was it for today's video. All links to the papers discussed here are linked in the description. If you like this content, give us a thumbs up. Stay fit, stay healthy. See you in the next one. Ciao.